Okay, today I'm going to tie something a little bit different. I'm going to go ahead and tie a uh, midge pattern that I've been using here locally at uh, Laguna Niguel Lake, uh, doing a little uh, still water nymphing, basically a little midging. So, um, what it is, it's a, a Juju B midge. Basically, it's a midge pattern uh, developed by uh, Charlie Craven, but uh, I've tied it a bit differently for Laguna Niguel, and I'll talk about it as I go ahead and tie this pattern up. So. I'm going to go ahead and just uh, slip in the vise. This is a uh, Tiemco 2499SPBL. Uh, you can kind of look at that hook and has a nice wide gape, a little bit different from a uh, 2488 in that. And it also has a almost spade-like uh, super sharp point. And uh, I do like this hook for fishing Luna Gal because I believe uh, it when you are still water nymphing having that wide gape and that super sharp uh, hook point uh, basically drives that hook right into that fish uh, a bit better there on the takes on the indicator dunk so um, go ahead and one of the important part of this fly is using the right thread uh, you can't really see that here do me there there it is I have some uh, good abroad uh, 10 knot um, you can go ahead and use the uh, UTC 70 as well um, I just have the good abroad and uh, I was lucky enough to score some uh, before they stopped making this uh, thread. If you can find some of this, uh, definitely pick some up. This is by far the thinnest and probably strongest thread out there. And it's really nice for this fly in particular. But uh, it works also really good when you're tying uh, any of these small little midge patterns. So first thing you're going to do is go ahead and just put that thread on the hook. And uh, go ahead and and bring out the materials. Uh, this this fly is pretty much tied with uh, super hair. Super hair is you know was used a lot back in the day for a lot of the saltwater patterns. I think it uh, it's kind of lost a little bit of its flavor and a lot a lot of it a little bit of its fans for doing that. But um, still, you can you make it some saltwater patterns, of course. But uh, Charlie Craven. Kind of story goes is he was tying up some uh, barracuda flies and uh, decided to see how this stuff would look on a little scud hook and he did and, and he liked the way it looked so uh, it's a pretty easy fly to tie Charlie ties it a bit differently than I do but I'm gonna go ahead and just tie it the way I normally tie it so for the new gal those fish are not as picky as probably the ones that Charlie's catching there in Colorado so you go ahead just start her off put the materials on uh, the side of the shank there closest to you what I like to do is just go ahead and just do a little trim there and go ahead and play poker with yourself and try to get that materials there sliding on and did I do it and I did it there you go so you just want to make sure that you get the materials all at the same time and what I have is I have two strands of chartreuse and one strand of black super hair so go ahead now is just advance the thread right down the hook and you're gonna make it nice and skinny you don't want to use too many wraps. That's why this uh, good abroad 10 knots really nice for that. I imagine the UTC would be fine as well. So about midway down, you can kind of see where I have it there along that scud hook. Go ahead and venture the thread back to the uh, the bead. What I like to do now is is create a little bit of a taper here. So I just add a little more thread right in the front. Um, you don't want bulky midges. That's one thing that if you go to the fly shops, you will see a lot of bulky midges, um, which is the benefit of actually tying your own flies. Um, using that UTC 70, in this case, the Good Abroad, you get some really nice skinny profile flies that I think are more realistic to match in the natural. So, there you go. I've gone ahead and made a nice little thread base and taper there. And I didn't count my threads. I know some guys like to do that, and I think that's madness. Just want taper. That's all I want. The trout care how many threads and how many times I wrap this thing. I, I doubt it. Okay, this is kind of important stuff, though. Um, you would think that you want to go ahead and, and wrap it basically like that and just wind it up the uh, the hook shank. That's not actually the best way to do it. I mean, you can. I don't think the trout really care. You'll, you'll end up with a, with a couple odd odd-looking wraps when you do it that way. Um, the way Charlie Craven likes to do it, uh, he likes to um, go ahead and, and start it off with 
more of a uh, perpendicular type of approach. And then by doing that, he can keep all the uh, the black uh, perpendicular to uh, the uh, hook shank, which makes it, in his way, just look better. I don't think the fish care, like I'm saying. Um, one thing that I would recommend, though, is you do is go ahead and and do a little whip finish right there to keep the uh, thread close to the to the bead and we're going to go ahead and now I'm going to try to wrap this material up without making too much of a mess so again start off start it up straight like that there and you just catch it with one finger bring back again straight again watch that hook point there you go it's looking pretty good straight up again Watch that super point. Um, if you do end up nicking that super hair, it's not like thread where it's going to break. The this material is pretty pretty tough. So again, just wrapping it up. One thing that I will I have to attest to this super hair material looks very translucent in the water, which I think is a very good quality for midges. I think that's the reason why I prefer this using just black wire and, and green thread. So there you go. I've created a nice little segmented midge. Now I'm going to go ahead and just bind the materials the eye there. So I'm good to go. So it looks good. Go ahead and just do a little snip snip. Perfect. Midge is looking good. Um, next, come through with a quick little whip finish behind the eye. Easy, easy. And you're good. Another thing you do now is I like to do is I like to coat my flies with a bit of Zappa Gap. Um, some guys like to use epoxy and that works as well but I, I find just using a little bit of zappa gap and using a little botkin here really gives a nice shine to the fly and it definitely strengthens it up you can use super glue um, I've definitely had better success using zappa gap and I think one of the key things here that you need to do is is definitely use it on a botkin don't try to use the brushables I think you overdo it and it becomes one of those things where eventually the fly will turn kind of white so there it is it's Laguna Niguel what I'm calling a Juju Beach Juju Bee Midge uh, Laguna Niguel style uh, still water nymphing like I said uh, nicer uh, wide gape hook um, nice translucent uh, chartreuse in black which has done really well there at in Laguna Gal in the especially in the afternoons and uh, small little fly there to match some of those naturals that come off there. Uh, typically in Laguna Gal, I think uh, size 18 and 16 is definitely the fly of choice. So uh, thanks for watching and uh, happy fishing to you. Bye.